No matter how much aid arrives, it is just not enough. In India, these patients are the lucky ones. Many are stuck outside the hospital doors. Thousands more likely dying in their homes. The black market price of oxygen far out of reach. What's worrying many experts is that other countries, particularly in Africa, have far weaker healthcare systems than India. We as a continent must be very, very prepared. Uh, prepared to um, adapt the same scenario that is happening in India can eventually happen on the continent. The head of the Africa Centers for Disease Control says as vaccine exports from India dry up, face masks are the only protection Africa has for now. And he is appealing to governments not to make the same mistakes as India, like holding political rallies. Do not have a mass gathering. They will promote the, the opportunity for the virus to replicate and we'll find ourselves in where uh, India is. And we cannot and should not find ourselves in that scenario because of the very fragile nature of our health system. One of Africa's richer nations, Tunisia, has an infection rate well below that of India, but its healthcare system has struggled to keep up. And if COVID can wreak this havoc in a city, a major city of, in India, I don't know, I don't want to think what it could do in Lagos, Nigeria, or Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Leith Greenslade coordinates the Every Breath Counts Coalition. The group says billions of dollars are needed to get the developing world oxygen ready. Our estimates suggest this could happen in 40 more countries. So we have to get ahead of that and be ready as an international you know, group of agencies to respond very quickly. The coalition wants the G7 nations, including Canada, to provide $240 million immediately. On Wednesday, Canada alone pledged $230 million to another UNICEF fund that will help supply oxygen and therapeutics where they're needed most. Redmond Channel, Global News, London.